Hello friends, good morning, welcome to another Sunday, another weekend, another catch up. My name's Kelly and I am the co-owner and part dyer of Lay Family Yarn and if this is the first time we're meeting, you are so very welcome. I hope you've all had a great week. I've had a flipping fantastic week. <laughs> it's been lovely, really, really had a lovely week. Busy week, yes, but a lovely week. I have been dyeing yarn in the studio, which um, I haven't done for months and months and months. So that's just been an utter joy. Thankfully, the colours I um, needed to dye were ones that I created way back when, back in the day. So it wasn't difficult for me to sort of interpret Nick's recipe or try and replicate colours that he's devised and perfected over the years. So yeah that was on my side and it, it um it, it gave me my confidence back which was lovely i dyed 50 sock sets for a wholesale order and then um else was that? Oh, some tonals and some custom orders so yeah i really really enjoyed it i forgot how physically hard work it was i'm not gonna lie um yeah it's no wonder nick's blooming back's gone um yeah that that was a reminder but i really enjoyed it I, i've really enjoyed the creativity again and being able to produce something tangible so that's been lovely i have been sowing seeds like a maniac for the garden and most excitingly they've all now germinated so we've now got seeds see the way i'm working my allotment and our food production is it's really just a recipe garden so we've <laughs> we've collectively sort of decided on the things that the crops that add most value to our family um both in terms of financial value but also um things like say like bags of i know i said this was a knitting podcast but bear with so bags of salad, right? We were a family of five. My parents live with Nick and I and our daughter Megan, five grown adults, and her chap comes for dinner occasionally. And from about May to November, we have salad every lunchtime. So we go through a lot of bagged salad. And yes, it's reasonably inexpensive. You know, you can get a bag of salad for about a pound. But when you when you serving five people we can go through 10 plus of those bags a week 12 12 bags if you we usually have a bag of mixed salad a bag of rocket and so we can easily go through 12 of those a week which straight away is 12 pounds isn't it but more importantly it's 12 bags of soft plastic and and it's it so it's not just about the the financial impact it's about our footprint impact so our goal is to be self-sufficient with if of salad. That's my biggest goal, is to provide us with all our lettuce and salad leaf needs. But anyway, so far we've got growing all the ingredients for coleslaw, all the ingredients for minestrone soup, all the ingredients for leek and potato soup, most of the ingredients for our favourite butternut squash and red pepper soup. It's too early to grow the squashes, but we've got all the pumpkin seeds and the arch, the pumpkin arch is built. So that's all in hand. We've got peas and beans. They're all up. We've got oh, a plethora of chilies and beets and tomatoes will be sown this month so that I can do our chilli jam and our beetroot chutneys, of beetroot burgers, we eat those a lot in the summer. So again, we've got the ingredients for that meal. We've got green beans for, we have green bean pesto pasta in the summer. So again, we've got the green beans, we've got the garlic, we've got the basil. So, so many of our staple meals, we've tried to build the ingredients around them. Mm. Oh, I just love it. I love it so excited by it honestly so excited it oh what else have we got now oh rhubarb crown we've got 
gooseberry bushes, um, blueberry bushes, raspberries, honeyberries. I've never heard of a honeyberry until I started this um, exploration into growing our own food. And it, it, um, you certainly never see it in the supermarkets here in the UK. It um, looks like a blueberry essentially, but it's got um, a sweeter taste with a, quite a distinct honey aftertaste. So that's really exciting. Loganberries. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So that's been a good highlight of the week. And obviously my biggest joy is that I'm here at the Happy Van, as we affectionately call it. We came over on Thursday, maybe, was it Thursday? Friday? Thursday, I think, oh, I don't know. The days all just go into a blur, honestly. I think it was Thursday, it could have been Friday, it really doesn't matter. Um, and we're here till back at work Tuesday. Oh, it's just, I just love it. I, there is nowhere in the world that I would rather be than here. And I mean that. I never ever thought that I would not say that about Cornwall. But honestly, I, we, I, yeah, this is, this is where I, this is where I am. This is where I'm happy. I love it. For some people, you know, there's, we're on a beautiful, beautiful camp. It's beautiful and it's in the middle, we're just over the Welsh border, so it's about 35 minutes from our home, which is perfect because we can come every week without it being a big ordeal. It is home from home, so all our cooking gadgets that we have at home, we have here. We have the same mattress on our bed here as we have at home. We have the same pillows that we have here as at home. It is literally just home from home, and that, for me, as a home person, makes it ideal. I come here and I have that same sense of being on holiday, that same, as soon as we pull in the gates, we're just like, <sighs> you know, we're close enough to mum and dad if they need us, we can get there in half an hour, you know, but we feel a million miles away that we can just switch off and relax and just reconnect as Kelly and Nick again and which sounds silly, doesn't it? Because we work together, we live together. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We could, we could just be Kelly and Nick. We're not mum and dad. We're not, I'm not caring for my parents or um, fulfilling any role in that respect. Um, we're not co-workers, we're not business owners. We're just Kelly and Nick and it's just lovely. We do, of course, talk about work. And in fact, many of our best business meetings are conducted over breakfast here at the Happy Van. Oh my gosh, we laugh. <laughs> we were laughing last night. Oh, Nick's so funny. He's, when you know, if, if and when you see Nick, he's ever so quiet, he's really unassuming. He's, um, he's just a gentle man that just sort of sits in the shadow but when you get to know him he's so funny so dry and quick-witted and oh, twice last night I peed my pants laughing he's so I can't tell you the joke because it's probably vulgar and highly inappropriate but oh my god I did laugh <laughs> oh it's lovely I'll be forever grateful that we invested in ourselves and and bought this um this caravan it's yeah it's it makes it makes all the difference to our lives. It enhances our lives in a way I never really thought possible. I mean, you know, we all live such busy lives, don't we? So to have this space that we can just escape to and just be completely content and at ease and herkle durkle every morning. I didn't get out of bed this morning till half nine. It's lovely. I mean, I took Jeff out for a walk at about five just to go to the bathroom. And then I just got a hot drink and snuggled back in bed. It's lovely. And I said to you last week, I think, isn't it? This is the place I get most of my knitting and crafting done. And I have done quite a bit, actually. Now, the projects I brought last week, I haven't... Um, I said I was going to bring some projects and leave them here for the duration and just work on them when we're at the caravan. I, d I did bring them. 
and I haven't touched them. Partly because I, the jumper that I want to make for mum, I showed you last week, um, that needs a provisional cast on. Well, I didn't bring either a crochet hook, nor did I bring a spare cord that I could just leave the life stitches on, which is what I will do. I'm not going to bother with a provisional. I'm just going to do a normal cast on, put them on a spare interchangeable cord with end stoppers on and then when it comes to picking them back up I can just bob the needle tips back on and that was a tip from my friend Zena so thank you darling yeah so I didn't I couldn't do that I did bring some placemats that I've been sewing for my mum in the hopes to give them for her birthday Mother's Day which is today um well that's not going to happen because I brought all the things brought needles didn't bring any thread I'm gonna see you just want to whack your sore head don't you that's okay so that didn't get done um what else did it bring I didn't even sort of set up the project to do Megan's jumper because that well I just yeah just didn't um anyway like all good knitters I didn't come with what I wanted I also brought 10 other projects so it's fine <laughs> not really but I did bring a few other bits so what have I been working on you might recall not sure when a few episodes ago I finished this sock this stripy sock um when did I finish this oh I've been watching some wonderful YouTube videos No. Oh, anyway, I've been watching Summer Lee Designs um, podcast and she's got some brilliant tips about sock knitting. So yeah, I've been enjoying those. Anyway, I finished this sock oh, a while ago now, wasn't it? And I hadn't cast on the second one, but I have now and I finished it. So I cast this on Thursday night when we arrived think it was Thursday yeah it must have been I literally did the cuff Thursday night and then Friday I did the leg the heel turn gusset decreases and then on Saturday I did the foot so they're finished that's lovely nice finished pair of stripy socks they're going in my box of socks how do you when you finish a pair of socks do you block them and put them straight into your sock drawer or do you do like I do and build them up over the over the year and then sort of at the start of the next cold season treat yourself to a whole new collection of socks that's what I do I do have quite a drawer full of socks so I'm never short um but yeah, I like that. I like having a little stash, a little stack of socks and then, yeah, getting them all out and popping them in my sock drawer. So we'll give these a little block. The one socks ends are woven in, that one needs doing, as you can see. So I'll get those ends woven in, give them a little block and then pop them away nice. Perhaps one of the weeks I'll show you the little stack I've already got in my box. So they're finished and then I have cast on a new sock. I ripped out the Colourwork sock that we were talking about last week, my Charlotte Stone design sock. Um, and thank you, thank you for all the tips that you left in the comments last week about things I could do to avoid the ladders and using different stitch markers. Somebody said the light bulb pins are a lot thinner than stitch markers so that's a way forward another lady said which is so right isn't it just a bit of scrap yarn in another color because that's what would have been used back in the day isn't it nobody would have had fancy dangly things and so that's another good idea i'm definitely definitely going to switch to short circulars for my color work socks I've knit many, many colour work mittens and never had, and again on short circulars, I've never had an issue with um, tension 
or floats or anything like that. I've knit now four hot water bottle covers. Again, never had an issue. So yeah, I think I'm going to go to short circulars. So in the meantime, I had the frosted eucalyptus yarn here with me. So I've just cast on another sock. And I've just put in, I had the frosted eucalyptus palette pack here with me as well, because I did bring my hot water bottle cover that I showed you last week. I haven't knit a stitch on it all week, so I won't show you that. But I just pinched some of the minis from it just to give a little contrast. I just put a little contrast. I cast on and knit two rows there. And then again at the end of the rib, I've done the same. And this is just a broken rib pattern. Nothing fancy, but nice and fun. And then I think I'm going to do sort of a bright pink, a cold pink. What have we got in here? Probably this chap because I've got some spares of that one. So a cold pink heel and toe. That's been fun. I've enjoyed that. And that's literally all I've been knitting on. But whilst I'm here, I thought we'll have a little chat about the doodle cards. So many of you left comments asking for a deeper dive into the doodle decks. Now, if you don't know, doodle decks are a product by Jamie Lomax of Pacific Knit Co. On Instagram, her website is Pacific Knit Co. If you don't know her, do have a look at her Instagram feed. It's really, really inspiring. And the whole concept of doodle decks are you are to doodle, you're to draw, you're to play around with colour and yarn and create your own patterns, designs, formulas from... Um, Yeah, just from these options available to you. I I'll explain myself better. I'll try. I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Where do we begin? Let's think. So, right. Let's just try and make sense of this. So we are a UK stockist of Doodle Decks. There are only two of us in the UK. And as soon as um, I reached, I knew of these products, I'd followed in Jamie on Instagram, I'd bought some of her patterns. Here we go, let's just get these in some sort of order. And as soon as I knew there was a wholesale opportunity, I just jumped on it because I genuinely stand by the product and think it's phenomenal. So here we go. This is a doodle deck. It is a deck of cards, essentially. There are 51 colour motif cards one instructional card and two cowl patterns within this deck. And they are literally like decks of cards. So you get 51 decks of cards. And on each deck is a different colour work pattern. So this is the winter one. So you get holly and snowflakes and patterns, leaves, presents, snowmen, reindeer, see and the concept is that you you choose your design you build your pattern you build your your design from these module cards and within each pack you get a how to doodle with yarn card what's it say you choose your theme so you'll pick your deck of cards we have the basic deck, spring, summer, autumn, winter, arctic. And she does do a Portland, a Chicago and a Rhinebeck pack as well. But we've never had those. She's currently got a jungle deck in testing, which we, we are test knitting for. I'll show you that in a minute. And she's just released her baking doodle deck as well. So you get your how to doodle with yarn card. You get a little bit about sequencing on how to 
or orientate your cards so you nip from the bottom up your different charts. There's also some information about whether you want to have two blank spaces in between your cards or whether you want to have when I say blank spaces I mean do you want two plain knit rows in between each chart motif do you just want one do you not want any at all you can really really change change the look and the feel of your your design because it is individual to you isn't it the patterns you get within you get a standard cowl so just your, your typical cowl pattern and then you get the cast on stitches how many rows rib to work um, where to place stitch markers, pick a chart, start working, blah, blah, blah. And then you also get an, an infinity cowl. <laughs> Did you hear that? That's Jeff. Can you see him on the bed? Oh, you can't see him. No, you can't see him. And again, provisionally cast on so many stitches in your main colour and blah, blah, blah. They are just brilliant. I've used the basic doodle deck for my hat that I've showed you a couple of times now. I'm using the winter doodle deck from a hot water bottle cover. And we're currently test knitting the jungle, which is so much fun. The good thing about the doodle decks is that they are all interchangeable with each other. So you can mix Arctic Deck, for example, this one is a half pack. So you only get, is it 24 motifs in this one, as opposed to 51 in the main deck. And it's kind of an extension pack, if you will, to the winter pack. Here's some of the colours you can, oh, oh, can you see that? These are really fun, so cute. You get penguins and polar bears. Uh, aren't they cute? There's whales and walruses. <laughs> but the, the stitch count for each chart is exactly the same, whether you're using a no. Whether you're using spring, summer, autumn, winter, they're all the same. You can completely custom design your project. Jamie also has on her website patterns for the basic beanie again then you can completely customize that and you could you could put sunflowers all over it you could put love hearts you could do oh gosh anything you know you for your grandkids you could put penguins and narwhals and then some snowflakes and some the world is literally your oyster you just get to doodle to play to draw to color you can also she also has a holiday stocking, which Nick and I have bought, um, with, you know, like a Christmas stocking. And this year, Nick and I are going to knit each other a Christmas stocking. So he's going to design mine and knit that. I'm going to design his. And then we're going to fill it with 24 little individual treats for Christmas for our advent. You know, just an individual chocolate bar or... I might put like a scratch card in for Nick or his favourite biscuits. You know, that sort of thing. So that's another thing we're going to work on for each other. Not necessarily in secret because it will probably be done here and we just sit side by side knitting. So, But you can see from the hot water bottle cover I showed you last week. I'll just give you a quick flash. Um, you can also interchange these patterns into other patterns <laughs> these designs so as long as your stitch count is the same you can add them into any other project you might be making too like hot water bottle covers like mittens oat socks um they into the stitch count worked into socks 
if you were clever enough, now I'm not suggesting I am, but you could put it into a motif on a jumper. I wouldn't know how to do that in terms of on a yoke of a jumper because it's, you know, all the increases and things, but certainly around the bottom hem or around your cuffs, I could um, put some snowflakes or just um, just a basic pattern motif. Let's find one. Like that, maybe. That could go around the bottom of a jumper. Well, that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Oh, can you imagine that around the cuff of a jumper? If you had a red Christmas jumper and you did sort of green and gold or... Oops, but you get the idea. You can make the colour work for these as simple or as complex as you want. In that, Jamie's really clever in, let's say, the snowman there. Potentially, you could do that with three colour colour three colours within the colour work chart. But for many, that would be quite intimidating. What she also says is you can duplicate stitch the finer detail. So the nose of a snowman, you could duplicate stitch. His eyes even, you could put beads on or you could duplicate stitch. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that as a stranded colour work. You could... Um, yeah, just add the finer details in. Even the ones where you think that that would be more than one, two colours. I've seen them on Instagram. If you look at the hashtag um, Doodle Decks on Instagram or look at Jamie's feed, people have done them in just two colours, just two plain colours, and they look so effective so so effective in fact jamie's holiday scarf which i really really want i'm hinting heavily at nick to make me for christmas i i want it in our undyed tweed which you know i love and just this color and i want the whole scarf just in this this combination various motifs all different motifs from snowflakes to patterns to stars whatever whatever but I just want it in these two colours and it's so effective. As Jamie's sample is some, somewhat similar and I just adore it. So I signed up to do a test knit of Jamie's new jungle pack. Oh, and it's so fun. It's such fun. I've printed out the whole pattern. I wouldn't ordinarily do this, but I have in this instance. Oh, I've got two patterns there. I have in this instance purely because Nick's knitting it, which maybe is a bit naughty. I, I don't know. I'm sure Jamie wouldn't mind. I haven't checked with him. I'm not going to lie. I signed up for the test knit. And then, as you know, Nick's not at work currently. And he just needed something to get his teeth into. And he's a really good knitter. He's a really competent, proficient knitter. And he's really competent and skilled at colour work. So I, I had no qualms about saying to him, will you knit this for me then? No problem at all. And I'm sure Jamie wouldn't have an issue with if Nick had indeed applied for the test knit himself. Um, in fact, she'd probably welcome a man test knitting. But yeah, anyway, here we go. So the jungle, I've printed it all off for Nick so that he could... Um, choose his own motifs and his own patterns and it's such fun it's it can be bright and bold and there are penguins and toucans and tigers and monstera leaves <laughs> isn't it fun snakes rivers pineapples really really good fun what else is there palm trees <laughs> Great big hibiscus flowers, they're really pretty. And you also get some blank doodle charts. Now you could just use, if you bought the doodle decks, I like these because you've got these forever, haven't you? They, they don't have to be, you know, like patterns are already getting 
tatty and scruffy whereas these just keep nice and I've ordered from Amazon some football collector card holders so they're just little plastic wallets that you can stick them all in and they just clip in a ring but a ring binder then so I've forever got them nice and I can just you know flip through but anyway so Nick chose his motives some people I have seen literally cut out the the thing and then stick it so they know where they're at other people just refer to all the individual charts Nick has drawn his out and coloured it in so he has a colour reference point and this is his design <laughs> isn't it fun <laughs> so he wanted to do the toucan and of course being Nick he's chosen the toucan because at some points it has four colours within the pattern would I choose to do four colours no not a cat in hell's chance would I choose to do four colours within my colour work will Nick absolutely he was discussing with me last night he thinks he's come up with a way of playing around with it so he knits two colours on one row and then the other two colours on second row I'll go into more details with that I'm hoping actually Nick's going to come in and share more details about that once he's tried it so this is where we're at he's chosen quite a basic neutral colour this is our dune colourway it's just a sand colour it's not the colour I would have chosen I'm not gonna lie I dyed up a sort of teal blue but again this is where it's all individual isn't it because my vision for this was a teal blue base with really poppy colours of um, like coral reds and pinks and yellows and mint greens and, and Nick's not gone down that path at all I took him home a load of pick and mix minis which again I sort of picked out the colours that I had the vision for and he sent me a text to work saying oh can I have this this and this instead and it's totally different to my concept so he's gone with this plain base sort of this aubergine colour some red you know he's obviously got some brighter blues and darker low lights there this is a river and now he's just going to begin his toucan so you can see Nick's is much more subtle than a lot of the samples you're going to see which again just highlights the individuality of it doesn't it really he's going to do a folded hem at the other end this is the bottom of the cowl and this was from advice from my friend Deborah Candy Shot Yarns on website YouTube Instagram lovely Deborah she's testing it a few of Jamie's patterns and we were chatting in our whatsapp and a few of the people in the test knit had issues with the with the cow sort of flopping over and then what you're seeing is your floats and whatnot what Deborah did was did a folded hem at the top and that just gave it that weight it stopped it flipping over so we're definitely going to do that I say we, Nick is definitely going to do that. This is another example where Nick and I are so very, very different. He weaves his ends in as he goes. He doesn't knit them in, he's physically woven them in and then just left a bit of a tail to snip after blocking. I would never do that. I leave the ends, all the ends, till the end, then regret it massively and never bother weaving them in. Maybe I need to be a bit more Nick, hey? So yeah, I'm, in, I'm excited to see the two can come alive today. The pattern is kind of written for DK, but Jamie gives you all the numbers for different yarn weights and um, bases and things. And Nick has chosen to do four ply, because of course he has, it's Nick. I love it though. He's so good with colour. Really nice. And this is all from Pick and Mix Minis. 
But yeah, that's all our creativity really. Oh, I've got to make chocolate brownies today. Mum and Dad are coming over for Mother's Day birthday lunch. So we're having a roast dinner and chocolate brownies, fresh raspberries, and I've got some clotted cream. That'd be nice. What else forgot to tell you? Oh, we've got some nice news coming up from work, which, um, yeah, it's lovely. I said the other, earlier, we some of our best work concepts arise from our breakfast meetings here. <laughs> and that was certainly the case this time. We were, we were just chatting about how we can and um, bring people to us at HQ, how we can um, welcome our local community of knitters. We, we're wanting to set up a knit night and um, a knit night and a once a month sort of craft noon session on a Saturday. And it's just about how do you spread that word within your local community? And it really highlighted it to us at Wonderwall last year. We met people there that lived literally in the village over from where we are at HQ and they didn't know we existed. And I don't mean that in a, well, don't you know who I am? Everybody knows who we are. I don't mean it in that sense, but it just blew our minds that people in the next village who were keen knitters, keen crafters, didn't know we were there. And that's really sad, isn't it? We need to tap into that local community, not just from a business perspective, but from our friendship groups to, to extend my friendship groups. So we were trying to um, think of ways of how we can bring people to the moors and to find us and share what we have and who we are. So we're having a studio open day, which we've never done before. Um, you know what I'm like, once we come up with an idea and I was like, well, how about this? You can do a yarn demo. Um, we'll pre-dye some of that colourway as well. And then people who come can go home with a mini skein of the open day colourway. Um, you know, just to share a bit of who we are and what we do and what we offer as a, as a company. Um, so yeah, we're having a studio open day, which is really exciting. Uh, it's a ticketed event purely because of numbers. We want everybody to be able to have a chair and knit and natter for a couple of hours or crochet, hand stitch, whatever, you know. Um, so it is a ticketed event just, just to monitor it in that respect. And yeah, we put it out yesterday and it's been really, really well received. There's just a handful of places left in both the morning and the afternoon session. Some people have bought a ticket for both sessions, are gonna make a day of it, which is lovely. Um, so if you're local or you fancy a day trip, yeah, or weekend, come and stay overnight, make a weekend of it, go for an evening meal in the pub. Yeah, we're having an open day on 28th of March, which is Easter Saturday, but we're hoping to do it sort of quarterly and, and sort of spread it through the year. And then from April, I'm hoping to get the knit nights up and running. Another thing we've decided to do, we've spoke about this so, so many times, Nick and I, and never done it. Um, for what reason? I don't know. Time, um, other commitments, effort, <laughs> effort and a bit more effort, you know, but we've decided we're going to do it. We're going to do a Mr and Mrs type thing. We're going to film it and we're going to put it out here on YouTube. And the concept is going to be, we're going to take one of my original colourways. I'm going to dye it in the style of how I did it originally. We've already picked the colour, but I'll keep that as a bit of a surprise. We've already picked the colour and Nick is going to dye it in the style that he dyes now. Um, just to show you how the same colours dyed different ways by different people are interpreted differently. And just to show you that the difference that you can get. Now it's not going to be a Mr and Mrs competition. There is no whose do you prefer, his or mine. Baby life. No, there's, there's none of that. Um, 
because I think they will be completely different. I think one will appeal to one person as another would appeal to another because aesthetically I think they'll be really different. Mine will be better, obviously. Um, probably not. Yeah, so we're going to film that soon um, and put that out here for you guys, which I think will be really fun, really fun. And I'm hoping, or Nick is agreeing to come and share a bit more of himself. Um, yeah, just to share a bit more of himself, both as a knitter and as an integral part of Loaf and Yarn. So that'll be good fun. What else have we got coming up? Oh, in a couple of weeks, our next Lay Family Yarn and Friends Dyer comes to play, which will be really fun. There's a few guesses going around Instagram. People have been guessing um, who have we had Jules from So Sweet Violet, but no, it's not Jules. We've had Paula, Mrs. D, guest. I mean, I wish it was. I'd give good money for that. But no, sadly, not Paula. Who else have we had? Sharon, SCR1TNO podcast. But no, it's not Sharon. Who else has been guessed at? I can't remember. Nobody's got it right yet anyway. I think you'll be surprised. I can't wait. I've met this person once before at a yarn show, very fleetingly, because, you know, you're busy and they're shopping and mingling around. So we've only met once before um she was lovely we've chatted on the phone and whatsapp and things many times now organizing this so yeah i'm really really looking forward to spending some time with her over over that period staying for a couple of nights so yeah we're gonna have a knit night in the pub one of the nights and um yeah oh if you're local actually um and you want to come for a knit night in the pub with this friend let me know and I'll give you details. Um, that'll be good fun. What else are we doing? Anyway, I think that's it. Oh, I'm so happy to be at my caravan. Love it. It's really fulfilled my happy cup again. Not that it was empty or depleting, but yeah, it's just a special feeling. I'm really grateful. All right then friends i'm going to leave it there until next week where maybe we'll have a toucan to show you we might have a half a sock who knows who knows but i will see you next week it'll either be for a friday night knit night or it might be for a sunday morning here at the caravan but either way i hope you have a lovely week ahead i hope you get lots of crafting in that your work-life balance is balanced and not too stressful and you find moments of joy. Lots of love. See you next week. <laughs>